So I'm David Taylor and um, I teach at the University of Warwick but I've been working with the RSC for the past couple of years to curate this exhibition, Draw New Mischief, which is about Shakespeare and political cartoons through the ages but especially in the contemporary moment. Fantastic. So before we get straight on this exhibition, can you tell me your journey with Royal Shakespeare? How did you, what kind of attracted you to the Royal Shakespeare and this project? So I had, uh, I, I was already working on a project uh, about political cartoons and literature and literary reference and Shakespeare in particular. And so actually I approached the RSC cold. I'd been using some of these images, some of these political cartoons as part of kind of open day talks that I've been giving. I thought it would make a great exhibition, so I approached the RSC. The RSC seemed to be, to be a great partner, both because um, it's quite close to Warwick University, but also because they're interested in thinking about Shakespeare uh, uh, in, in terms of relevance, in terms of how Shakespeare engages and helps us understand our own lives and, and our own contemporary moment. So for me, the fit was really good. Fantastic. So obviously they've got the new Rome season here at the Barbican Centre. Yeah. How does this exhibition actually tie in with the Rome season? It ties in brilliantly because Shakespeare's Rome plays are plays that are really interested in thinking about what politics is, who politicians are, what they should be doing, what they shouldn't be doing, trying to find ways of gauging questions of political truth, uh, of questions of political relevance. And of course, that's also what the cartoons are doing. And, and cartoonists for the past hun- few hundred years have been looking to some of the Rome plays, plays like Coriolanus and Julius Caesar, for inspiration, to think through these questions of what's the relationship between our leaders and our people? What's a, when, when do we know that our leaders are, are, are speaking the truth? When do we know that they're trying to, to persuade us away from something that we should or should not be doing? Do you feel like, obviously, you know, even in newspapers you get comedic cartoons that yeah. reference recent events. Do you feel it's almost a slightly safer way to tackle issues and obviously make light or fun of certain situations? Obviously, some politicians or um, world leaders aren't the best equipped for their roles. So do right. you feel like cartoons is quite a, a safer way to kind of bring that to everyone's knowledge without outrightly being like, I can't do it? That's a, that's a, that's a tricky question. I think in part that the answer is yes, but... A, it's a really interesting moment right now for the political, political cartoon because it's become a digital medium. So you, you talked about it being seen in papers, but I, I would guess that most people now look at their cartoons on their computers, on their laptops, on their phones, on their tablets. And that means that cartoons are crossing cultural borders in really interesting ways. And we've seen this, I mean, the, the Charlie Hebdo massacres, just uh, not even a couple of years ago, showed just how much there can be a problem when one culture's sense of humour and sense of satire rubs uncomfortably against another culture's sense of humour and satire. So I, do, I don't think it's true that, that cartooning is safe and indeed if you, if you uh, were to turn to the example of say Turkey that there's at least one or two cartoonists in Turkey who are currently in prison. So I think we're lucky in this country that cartooning and cartoonists are safe and that we consider it to be a kind of legitimate kind of, of, uh, of commentary, even a di- legitimate kind of protest. But that's not true everywhere. Um, another one you were saying that, for instance, some of these um, works happened um, post Brexit and yeah. Trump. So, how do you think that influenced the artwork? That's a really good question. So, we, what we decided to do was to commission five cartoonists to create new cartoons that respond directly to Shakespeare's Rome plays. And when we made that decision, this was before the Brexit vote had taken place. It was before Trump was elected to the presidency. Uh, and so I remember early on I was having a question of, well, well what, what kinds of things might, this, might these cartoonists want to respond to? And we, we could not possibly have imagined that they'd have quite so much material to work with. So, so that three of the cartoons are, uh, that we've got are, are, are really working with Trump. Uh, one of the cartoons casts Theresa May as, as Shakespeare's Cleopatra, this kind of haughty, commanding, slightly dangerous figure. Um, so I think it's been a challenge for the cartoonists, especially some cartoonists who are being asked to respond to Shakespeare plays such as Titus Andronicus that haven't really been tackled by cartoonists before. But I think also they were, it was just a great moment uh, for, for the cartoonists. I mean, a bad moment for us, a bad moment for politicians is almost always a good moment for, for the satirist. That's great. And with the, um, the cartoonists, is it something, did you approach them or did they approach you? Is it previous work you had seen that attracted right. you to them? So we approached them. Uh, I mean, what, what was important for us was to try and get a sense of diversity. Uh, the cartooning world is still rather too male and, and white. And so what we went for was a mixture of British cartoonists and foreign cartoonists. We have alongside the likes of Steve Bell 
and Christina Adams and Lorna Miller, who are all based in this country. We also have Anne Telneas, who works at the Washington Post, who won the Pulitzer Prize for cartooning a number of years ago. And we have Victor Ndulu, who is a Kenyan cartoonist and who won a, a prize in the UN a number of years ago for, for one of his cartoons. So, so we approach them uh, and we try to get a sense of diversity and to set them a challenge. That's great. And do you find, obviously, leading the talks now, so they, do you find they're quite a good educational tool? Like people then it almost highlights it, or people that, um, I guess, yeah. you get a bit desensitised by TV, but when they see it maybe in something yeah. more relatable, they're yeah. actually like, oh, OK, now I completely see how that I th- I think they're a fantastic educational tool because I think that the problem sometimes is, especially in schools, that, that, that students are being required to read Shakespeare. It's you know, sometimes felt, it gets to feel like that it's, that it's being forced on them. They don't, they're not always made to realise just how, how relevant Shakespeare is. The fact that Shakespeare doesn't just exist on the pages of their books, doesn't just exist on the, on the stages of our theatres, but it's kind of all around us, that we cannot but think with Shakespeare, especially in political terms. We can't but turn to Shakespeare's plays to think through questions of betrayal and of um, uh, lies and false promises. These are, the, these are the kinds of things that plays like Julius Caesar and Titus Andronicus and Coriolanus and Antony and raise for us again and again and again. So, so what's wonderful about these cartoons, and when I show them to students, this is really clear, is that they suddenly think, wow, I hadn't realised just how much I'm already thinking with Shakespeare, that other people around me are already thinking with Shakespeare. And that's great. Um, do you think...